If I lay claim to be a Christian and I continue to commit sin without any remorse, without any guilty conscience, with the deception of the devil that God has sent me is okay, nobody sees me. Then I'm in trouble. I have allowed myself to be deceived. This is what Paul is saying here. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the... Let's go now to verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, this is what Paul is saying. We are sinners, condemned. There is no way we can help ourselves. Christ came as a righteous man, lived a righteous life, died for our sins by faith. He gives us legal righteousness. And His grace empowers us now to start walking evangelical righteousness. There are two things. There is a legal righteousness, there is an evangelical righteousness. The legal righteousness is what I get by faith, by grace, doing nothing. The evangelical righteousness is something that I must do because it shows that it is I have possessed the legal righteousness. Do you get it? It's like this. Like Paul put it in Ephesians. A natural sinner is dead in sin. As far as anything to do with God is concerned, he's dead. It's like Lazarus in the grave. He's dead, buried, maybe four days or so. That's a natural sinner. Now, repentance is when Christ calls Lazarus from the grave. Now, the first thing dead Lazarus does is what? He hears the voice of God. He comes alive first. Dead man don't hear. Dead man don't hear. So, the power of God raises Lazarus up. Lazarus hears come out. Then Lazarus comes out. That is the same experience of a Christian by grace. The power of God opens his eyes to his sinful nature. He sees Christ dying, that he sees Christ as substitute for his sins. Then he repents, places his faith in Christ, and gradually struggles to live to please God. He gradually struggles to please, to please God. Why is that? He develops a motive of love for God. He develops a motive of love for God. Right from the beginning, God has operated with the Jews on the basis of love. Because he did not give the commandment in Genesis. He gave it in February. So what was the rule the people in Genesis obeyed? Love for God. They loved God and they obeyed him. Joseph refused to sleep with Potiphar because he had love for God. And that love for God wrote the law. That law that was not written outward wrote it in their hearts. So they were able to obey it. You understand? So the law of God wrote it in their heart, so they were able to obey it. That is so important. That is the law of Christ. That is what it means to live a New Testament life. You understand? Now, coming to the question I ask, there are people confused about this a lot. Because they say to themselves, but you tell me I'm saved by grace, not by works now. How can you tell me I'm saved by grace, not by works, and I can still save by works? Because you still ask me to do something, which is live an obedient life. Yeah, the problem is sin, number one. So whoever does not understand that God has saved him by grace, and the law of grace, the law of Christ, demands him now to focus through loving God in obeying God. If, if somebody does not understand that, then it's, that person is still a sinner. That person is not saved. It's very simple. The law of Moses condemns us. There is nobody that can fulfill that law. Because Jesus Christ came to expand the law. The law does not only condemn um, adultery, lost in the heart, is also condemned. The law does not only condemn murder, wickedness in the heart is also condemned. 
So the law of God condemns every man. It takes the spirit of God to make us understand the grace of God. And half of the people that claim to understand the grace of God don't understand it. Because like we read in Titus and Romans 6.1, Paul says, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, God forbid. How shall we that are dead in sin live any longer therein? Now this is what Paul is saying. A believer is dead in sin. How come? Because he's in Christ. He's in Christ. Romans 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in, inside Christ Jesus. To understand that, let's picture Christ as the ark that these people are in, in the time of Noah. We need to get this analogy. So, Christ is like this ark where every believer is in. And in that act, there is no sin because there can't be any sin in Christ. The grace of God is there. Why is there no sin? In practical terms, does that mean that person does not think evil, does not do evil sometimes? No, he does. But the legal righteousness covers sin because he's empowered to follow evangelical righteousness. And it is only the grace of God that helps us do this. Now, I have a duty to do it, but I don't boast of me doing it because I didn't save myself in the first place. And the knowledge and the wisdom and the power by which I live the life of faith and following God is not in my power, it's not within me. It is God strengthening and sustaining me. You will see that in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. A very powerful passage by Apostle Paul. Let's read it. You know, I want to try and go around this circle to try to make us understand it. Because this is the crux of the law of God. This is the crux. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. This is Paul. Now, before we understand before we read this paul was a blasphemer he was a persecutor of the church paul persecuted the church seriously and somehow paul got saved miraculously there's a young man called stephen that was being stoned in acts chapter 8 paul was giving consent to these people to kill Stephen. So God, Paul got saved. And Paul's eyes was opened. And he began to gradually preach the gospel. He began to gradually preach the gospel. And he understood. Because he looked at his life, he understood the mystery of the grace of God. He understood it. And this is what he wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. Let me read from verse 9 as I try to round this thing up. For I am less, I am the least of the apostles that I'm not meant to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Verse 10. For by the grace of God, for by the grace of God, not by my power, for by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. Because that grace was not in vain, what did he do? But I labored more abundantly than they all. Paul, yet not I, but the grace of God which is in me. This is what Paul is saying. I persecuted the church. I was a sinner. God saved me by his grace. This grace was not in vain. So I labored. And it is not even me doing the laboring. It is the grace of God. That's the mindset of a Christian. That is what it is to obey the law of Christ. And this is what God has simply called us to do. Because at this end time, this is what we need to be doing. 
if we are going to indeed be true Christian. This is true Christianity. This is true Christianity. Now, question of some people ask, but why do we have people that are pastors that commit sin? Why do we have so many false Christians and things like that? It's a normal question. Because either they don't understand this principle or because the devil has chosen to deceive them that they are Christians but they are not. You understand, number one, either they don't understand the principle. I want to tell you, like I always say, that someone is preaching is not an evidence he's saved. God does not judge me based on the 40 minutes talk I give every Sunday. That's not the yardstick for my assessment. The yardstick for my assessment is the general life I live before God. How am I growing in grace? That's critical. So, first of all, let's stop analyzing people by what you see them do on pulpit or in public places. If the principle of sin, which is that person is either a rapist or a, an, a gluton that is running church to just embezzle and mass wealth, you know, all to fulfill his own, his idea, his vision, is to satisfy himself. The whole purpose of all he's doing is self-fulfillment. There is no Christ that is chasing. There is no desire to love God there. Sorry to say it is completely wrong and it's completely wrong. Completely wrong and wrong. You know, and it is very easy for the devil to deceive. This is why where we read before it says, in the latter time, men shall depart from the faith, giving it to seducing spirit and grossness of devils. That word, depart, means they leave the church. It does not mean they backslide. They were never Christians. You see, the word backslide means that person was never a Christian. He was only acting like a Christian. Because a true Christian said by grace, it is God. It is the power of God sustaining that person. Because the person knows, number one, the works he's doing is not the basis of his salvation. He's only resting in grace. As God inspires him and instructs him to obey, he simply obeys. His motive is not to please anybody. His motive is to please Christ. So as God gives him wisdom, as he meditates in the word, as he prays, and this revelation comes to him, he simply obeys. And as he's obeying, he will just see himself gradually struggling against sin. This is exactly the principle of the law of grace. So as I try to round up, as sinners, we are saved by grace through faith, not by the law. I've explained that to us. So, we walk in the spirit by fighting against the flesh. Like we read in Romans 8. There is now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. We walk in the spirit. It's like a coin. We walk in the spirit. Obey God. Obey his word. Do what he has said in his word. By, by so doing, we fight against the flesh. If we are looking for a way to stop sinning, then do what God says. Read his word. Do what the word of God says. Love your neighbor as yourself. Pray on a daily basis. Start reading the Bible and start doing what the word of God says. That's the only way you can overcome sin. And then, these people also rest. They rest in the finished work of Christ. They don't rest in themselves. The rest in the finished work of Christ because he is the merit of their redemption. This is exactly what the Bible says. I want to encourage us, read Romans 8 verses 1 to 14. Time does not allow me. If I read all the passages, we'll spend too much time. Galatians 5, 16 to 24. Read it too. Galatians 3, 13. Romans 3, 23. To 24. This is the summary of living by faith in Christ. This is the summary.
And I want to thank you for listening. If you have any question or there.